Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I wanted to talk about simplicity, and I'm going to use a couple of quotes from Sid Banks, who is the the Scottish mystic whose work I'm continually referring to in these podcasts. And, And in his book, The Missing Link, he said, when seeking wisdom, one is very apt to find that in simplicity lies complexity. Those who don't realize the profound nature of such simplicity are very apt to expound on their findings, losing the essence. Now, a lot of people think, well, no, surely inside complexity you find simplicity. But one of the things that I've noticed over the years is I I get a lot of uh, praise, usually, though sometimes the opposite of praise, for, for how simply I put things. And when I put something simply, it's because I see it simply. The gift that I've got personally is not necessarily articulating things simply. It's seeing them simply. And people go, well, how do you simplify complex problems down to their essence? I remember when I used to do the, the, the radio show on Hay House Radio for 15 years. One of my regular listeners came up to me and said, I, I don't understand. We, we met at an event. They said, I don't understand how your show works. Somebody pours their heart out to you and, uh, and, 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 and they tell you they're all their life's problems in three minutes and you go, blah, 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 blah. And they go, oh my God, that changes everything. And then they go off happy. Like what's going on? And what's going on is I hear the simplicity that they've made very complicated The reason that I can do what I do is not because I'm good at simplifying the complex. It's because I'm good at not complexifying the simple. And even hearing that sentence, I'm going, hmm, not sure if I'm doing a great job of it right now, but hey, let's, let's roll with it. So when Sid says, when seeking wisdom, one is very apt to find that in simplicity lies complexity. And that those who don't realize the profound nature of such simplicity, in other words, if you think, well, that's too simple, there's got to be more to it than we're living in the feeling of our thinking. There's got to be more to it than we're part of the intelligence of life. I mean, that's great, but yeah, but then what do I do? Those who don't realize the profound nature of such simplicity are very apt to expound on their findings. Losing the essence. Now, I see this all the time in, in working with other people who want to share this inside-out understanding, these principles behind the human experience with others, is all of the attention goes on to the implications. Ah, well, given that people think and that people are aware and that people have this aliveness and intelligence inside them, Here's how that plays out in business. Here's how that plays out in health. Here's how that plays out in relationships. And you have these fascinating conversations about, well, so therefore we should do this and we should do that and we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that. And you get this phenomenon that's known in our world as the three people which is this idea that, oh, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to behave this way. And here are all the rules. But the whole point of the simplicity of the principles of mind, consciousness, and thought, of the understanding that we are made of an alive intelligence, that we have the gift of awareness that allows us to experience that intelligence and the creative faculty of thought that lets us literally imagine anything. We lose the simplicity of that as we go deeper and deeper and deeper into the implications and applications and nuances. And we lose the feeling of it. We lose the essence of it. Now, that's not to say, not trying to create a new set of rules for the three people right, who are going to come in and go, ah, no, you can't expound on your findings. It's just beginning to notice for yourself. Is there a point at which I've gotten too clever by half. 
at which I'm now brilliant at articulating what I see, but I no longer really see it. And one of the most profound, and I think it was profound because it was so simple and honest expressions of this came. I was talking to my friend Anita Morjani, who wrote the New York Times bestseller, Dying to Be Me. And she was sharing that when she first had her near-death experience, and if you don't know her her story, I actually have a series of podcasts uh, where she shares it in the Caffeine for the Soul series, but you can also find out. Just type her name into Google, you'll find a ton of stuff. But, but essentially, she had stage four cancer, died on the operating table, was resuscitated, and when she came back, the cancer was gone. And it turned out that while she was dead or on the other side, as she talks about it, she had a profound experience of what, for lack of a better word, we'll call God. It may or may not fit with God as you know the idea, but it fits with the essence of what I experience when I hear that word. And she told me her story a bit of her story I'd never heard, which was that in the aftermath of the miracle of her healing, her spontaneous remission, all sorts of doctors would would ask her to come in and would present her case to other doctors who would ask questions and try and analyze it in hopes, genuinely, that they would see something that would enable them to facilitate that kind of recovery in other patients. But she said for her, the more her experience was analyzed, the more it was picked apart and taken apart and reverse engineered. She said there was a certain point where I began to lose the feeling of it. I began to lose the magic. I began to lose the essence. And she said, at that point, I I withdrew. I, I started saying no to all those talks. She said, I wrote my story one last time, which is in fact how it got discovered by Wayne Dyer and then ultimately became a a two-year New York Times bestseller. But I just wanted to stay with the essence, to stay with the feeling, to stay with the magic. And that's, that's what I really would love to encourage you. If in listening to these podcasts, and if, if in exploring whatever other spiritual resources you explore, you find a simple, profound feeling, a simple, profound understanding. Don't complexify it. Don't overdo the implications. Just be with it and let the implications unfold inside you. Now, I I said I'd share a second quote from Sid. This is also from The Missing Link. And this speaks to maybe a different way of thinking about changing the world. The solution to outwardly complex problems created by misguided thoughts will not arise from complicated analytical theory, but will emerge as an insight wrapped in a blanket of simplicity. And while I could probably do a whole other podcast just on that quote, for me, just knowing that the solution to the problem, no matter how complex the problem looks, invariably starts with something very, very simple. Gives you a place to stand. It gives you a reference. It gives you a a different kind of target than when you assume that complex-seeming problems are going to require complex-seeming solutions. Have fun, learn heaps, keep it simple, and I'll talk to you soon.